Hello again, friends and onlookers. Conrad Zimmerman here, playing another one of my favorite classic games, Maniac Mansion. Uh, real quick before we get into this, I'm just going to select a couple of characters. You get to pick uh, up to... Th you, well, you have to select two additional characters to accompany Dave. Um, I like Bernard and Razor. Uh, Bernard the Nerd and Razor the Lead Singer for the punk band Razor and the Scumettes. Because I like the juxtaposition. So let's, uh, we'll start this up. Uh, Maniac Mansion released in October of 1987. Uh, it was uh, a huge success for Lucasfilm Games. Uh, spawned a television series written by Eugene Levy. Uh, and it was the first point-and-click adventure game that I'd ever played. I'd had experience with other adventure games uh, from the Sierra line, uh, the King's Quest series, which uh, apparently is what inspired them to go with the adventure game route for Maniac Mansion and the, uh, the story and concepts that they had. That uh, they went with uh, a point-and-click interface, which I, I played it on the Commodore 64 originally, and you would use the, uh, the joystick to control and select uh, you know, your verbs and form your sentences. Uh, of course, all of this was before mice were really in wide use and, uh, and so forth. Um, it wasn't PCs and, and the Commodore uh, and the Amiga and all this. They, they, they just weren't using it yet. And so they used the, uh, the joystick. There might have been mouse support in the, uh, in the original Maniac Mansion, but I, I don't think so. Um, it doesn't seem right. Uh, so this is the game fan, or the Lucas Fan Games remake, Maniac Mansion Deluxe. It's got some upgraded graphics and so forth. Here's our setup. Dave's pretty sure that he saw Dr. Fred take his girlfriend Sandy to his creepy mansion. And it's up to us to get her out of there. Could be real dangerous. If anyone wants to back out, now's the time. Okay, Bernard's out of here. Don't be a tuna head. Now this was a uh, change. The original line was "Don't be a shithead," and uh, they uh, switched the line due to uh, concerns of keeping it more friendly for families. Razor heard Dr. Fred was kind of cute. She has interesting taste in men. Let's go rescue Sandy. All right, so we're gonna get things started. I like Razor, and I'm just gonna play as her for a while because I can. And I don't need the other two for quite a bit. We're going to spend some time here collecting items. And we're at the front door. Where would you hide a key to your front door? I'd put it under the doormat. Look at that. There is a key. So we will use this key in the front door and go inside the mansion. Uh, this is the kitchen. This is the uh, first room that I would normally go in. But I'm going to run across the hall first to the lounge. I'm going to pass through the lounge and head into the library and collect an item that will be very useful soon. Let's turn on the lights. It's a little dark in here. It also gives me an opportunity to introduce you to Chuck the Plant. This is Chuck the Plant. Hello, Chuck the Plant. Chuck the Plant is a, uh, a running reference that appears in uh, several LucasArts games and uh, also recently appeared, I believe, in uh, Jasper Burns' Lone Survivor. Uh, you could water chuck the plant and, and make him happy. I opened up a loose panel there. And it's revealed a cassette tape. And let's let's close that panel. We want to be good guests in this home. No reason to leave a mess. And then we'll head back towards the kitchen. Now, as we get to the kitchen here, you'll find it's actually occupied. There's a character in there already. That's Nurse Edna. She's looking in the fridge. This is a, one of those weird, like take advantage of the situation things uh oh we got kind of got a cut scene real quick well my dear i hope you're having fun within minutes it'll all be over you'll be hooked up to my machine getting your pretty brain sucked out that line was changed to removed um later for the nintendo version you'll never get away with this dave and his friends will rescue me you and your meteor can eat slime that's what she thinks! <laughs> oh, yes. Fred's got plans. Help! 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 Right, so as I was saying, this is a little glitch we'll be able to take advantage of. Or 
Something of that nature. There's Edna. She's gonna chase us out of the room, but because we leave the room before she gets us, she resets back to her bedroom. Uh, that's just something that happens with the characters. If you can escape them, they go back to their bedrooms and stop being a problem. Uh, so let's open up the fridge. We'll get this can of Pepsi we need. And close the fridge, because we're good guests. And head through the dining room to the pantry. Yep, big gross stains and rotting food. Clearly, someone has not been keeping up the house. So in here, we need these fruit drinks. And I need this glass jar. And I want this developer fluid, because I like smashing it. There we go. And we head back out. Have a few more things we need to do with the razor before we get too out of hand. Let's go upstairs and start exploring some of the other rooms in the mansion. Up we go! Over here to the left, we have uh, some wax fruit. Let's pick that up. This paintbrush and this paint remover. Now you know it's a video g oh shit! Damn it, sorry. Uh, this is a very small window and it's very easy for me to click out of it. Um, I don't need to go in there yet, so we'll wait. Oh, the flashlight needs batteries in case you were wondering. Go upstairs some more. Uh-oh. Weird Ed Edison on the prowl. He's hungry, he wants a snack. So we may have to avoid him in a minute. This green tentacle won't pat let us pass until we fed him. So let's give him this wax fruit. Hey, it's his favorite. What a coincidence. It's almost like we knew. Uh, you could feed all sorts of crap to him, but uh, he won't progress you until you give him the wax fruit. Now we'll give him these fruit drinks, and he's going to let us pass. You notice I'm passing by a lot of rooms in this, and that's because not all the rooms are necessary. Is Weird Ed out of his room? He is. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and pick up his hamster. And there's a card key hiding behind it. Let's pick up his piggy bank, too. Oh, crap. We broke it. Well, that's all right. We only need a dime. dum de dum dum de dum Oh, boy. Cheese for my hamster in me. Good for you, Ed. Meanwhile, I am robbing you blind. Weird Ed Edison is uh, a strange young man. He's got a strategic commando chart, which makes no sense. Yep. And you can see here there's an X-Wing and a fighter jet. A little uh, Lucas, Lucas love. We need to go into this room. And here we've got an like, exercise and a pin-up mummy, Miss Mummy of 982 BC. Delightful. We are going to get some exercise on. On the hulk matic machine. Yes. Razor feels much stronger now. And so we're going to head back downstairs. Now, oh shit! Weird Ed Edison caught us in the house. That's not good. Uh, give him his hamster back, quick! Oh, yes! Cool! We succeeded. So by giving him his hamster, he's our friend. Or at least he's not going to take me down to the dungeon right now. Which is good, because I really can't afford to go down to the dungeon. Or at least it would just screw up my plans and, and make this a little more tedious and time-consuming. So that's good. We were able to make Fred or Ed happy with us. That's good. Good old weird Ed. We head back down to... Oh, I forgot something. I forgot to go up and see Green Tentacle and get some things from his room, because that's where I was headed when Weird Ed stopped me. Let's go back upstairs. And into the room here. And we need to pick up another dime. I could have taken the two dimes I needed from Ed's piggy bank, but it seemed unnecessarily cruel. Why take all of his money? And now here we need this record that Green Tentacle has in his room. Along with this yellow key, if we can get our cursor onto it, there we go. And back down the hatch. Now we head downstairs, where we will meet up with the rest of our gang. 
Everyone else is still waiting by the gate. Uh, there are a couple of puzzle things that I could have set up and prepared for. I, I didn't do it because I've decided to take a, probably the most straightforward approach to finishing this that I can. Uh, we're going to run out here real quick and pick up these bushes. And because I exercised this, uh, this grate, which is welded shut, um, I think it was originally rusted shut. Um, but because I'm strong now, I can easily pull that open. Now we'll head back into the house and to the pantry. Oh, wait, no, one more thing we need to do before we go to the pantry. Keep forgetting. We gotta go into the basement. There's a, a key that we need to open that back pantry door. So we'll need another character. Let's bring Dave in. And the reason we need another character is the uh, door over here that Razor is standing in front of. It has no handle. It can't be opened with a push or a pull from this side. The way we have to open it, is, and this is the first secret I found in this game, and it made me so, like, over the moon when I discovered it for the first time. You push on this gargoyle and it opens the door, and god damn it, if I can have that in a house someday, that would be the coolest thing ever. 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 Right, so we are in the basement here. I didn't bother turning on the lights, um, which I guess I should have just so you can see it more clearly. I mean, it, you can see it fairly well. In other versions of this game, the uh, the room is like pitch black and you can only see your character, who isn't even really shadowed that much, I don't think, just there. The doorbell rang. Something's at the door. Now this is absolutely not necessary for me to... Oh, Weird Ed's wondering if that's his package at the door. It's also another way to get Ed out of his room early on if you need to. You can ring the bell and he'll go and look for his package down here. Uh, I don't need this package, but I'm going to pick it up because I'm a dick. There we go. Now Dave is vulnerable here in this room because he's holding that open for Razor, so we'll hide him. And uh, This is one of those tricky things. you got to aim on the bottom of the frame or she'll go behind the nuclear reactor which was which is bitchin uh the furnace is it was made in chernobyl which of course is the site of a horrible nuclear disaster oh shit get in the door quick whoo we managed to avoid ed entirely which is nice uh so we're gonna take razor back out through to the pantry oh god damn it I clicked out of the window again. I don't know if that's affecting the video, like if anything's happening. If you're seeing anything when that happens, probably. It's probably just like sitting there and looking weird. Okay, so I have this silver key that I picked up. And we use it in this door, which opens things up. Now we're out at the pool. Oh, Weird Ed is talking to his mother, Edna. Daddy's been acting very strangely ever since his secret project in the lab. Yes, so? Well, Mommy, I'm worried about him. He hasn't been to dinner for five years. Yes, so? And he's been bringing those bodies down to the basement late at night. What's your point, Ed? I'm a very busy lady. Ho oh, hum, never mind. And off he goes. Poor Ed just wants to keep his family together. Right, so we're at the pool. Now the pool is being used as a cooling pond for the nuclear reactor in the basement, uh, which means it's full of radioactive water. Now we want some of that radioactive water for a later purpose, so we're going to use this glass jar to collect some. And then we're going to head into the back of the house to the garage again because we've worked out we can um, open the garage door otherwise it would be too heavy we need to pick up this water faucet handle that comes in useful in a little bit and we need to open the trunk of the Edsel here now the Edsel Obviously, the Edsel's in there because, you know, the joke of the Ed family and everything ending in Ed. The Edsel was a really great car uh, that just never sold. And so you can see here it's got modified rocket engines on it. It's pretty badass. Um, one of the ways to complete the game involves using the Edsel. Uh, that's not the conclusion I'm going to 
take in this circumstance. Uh, but it's definitely one of the options, and it's one of the options that's available no matter what characters you use to uh, gain access to the lab. So, pretty neat. Alright, so back in the kitchen, it's gonna be uh, time to- Oh, I need to do one more thing with Razor here. I totally forgot. Since we've got her at the pool, and we've got Bernard waiting outside already, let's go ahead and go into the pool and get a couple of necessary items. Uh, in order to get into the pool, we're going to have to drain it, which is a problem because the nuclear reactor could melt down if the cooling pond is drained for too long. So we'll have to work quickly. Headed down into this grating, which takes us below the house, there is a valve that uh, Bernard can turn. So let's open that up. And now we've got some uh, alarm sirens blaring, a klaxon, if you will. We're going to pick up this radio, we're going to pick up this glowing key, and we're going to walk up the stairs and get out of here as quickly as possible. Switch back to Bernard. Oh no! The pool is empty again! We're going to have another meltdown! They had a meltdown before this? How can I take over the world when I'm on a budget? I always get stuck with cheap equipment! Boy, the meteor is going to be pissed. Tentacle! Front and center! Yes, sir. Dr. Fred, sir. Purple tentacle at your disposal, sir. Quick! Go check out the reactor! Yes, sir. And off purple tentacle goes to check the reactor. We are just going to go ahead and close the valve and fix things. Neat. So the reactor's not going to melt down. Purple Tentacle's out on the prowl, looking to see what the problem is. And here we see he has made it down there. Hmm, there's no one here. Turns out the lights because, you know, we want to be economical. Why waste power? Back to Razor, walking through the dining room, into the kitchen, to meet up with Dave. Hello, Dave. Now we're going to bring Bernard into the house. Because we're going to need all three kids to accomplish what I want to do efficiently. Now, again, everything can be done with just two kids. You could kill one of them off and still finish the game. Uh, but at least I think you could still finish it. I don't think you need to necessarily keep everyone alive. So we're going to give all of our unneeded keys to Dave because he will be needing them later. Uh, we, that would be the glowing key, the card key, and oh, there's one more key we need. So let's take Razor into that room upstairs that I skipped by earlier. And we'll do a little something to get that. Uh, in here, you can see we've got a Victrola, there's a tape recorder. Now, there's a record here, and that's a lovely little musical composition. But uh, we have another record that we picked up from, from Green Tentacle's room. We're going to put that on, and we turn on the Victrola. It is a horrible screeching noise, and you can see the, the vase here has shattered from it. We'll take this cassette tape, put it in the tape recorder, and uh, turn on the tape recorder so that it captures that lovely, lovely noise. And we'll turn it back off, and we'll turn this off, because goddamn if that isn't annoying and pick up our now recorded tape. We'll take this downstairs. Now every character has unique abilities that uh, will allow them to contribute to solving the puzzle of Maniac Mansion in different ways. Um, in the case of Razor, uh, she's a musician and you can uh, play some music on that piano and, and use that uh, recording on the tape again. Uh, just another way to go about it and then there's something that a benefit to doing that. I don't want to spoil everything in here. Uh, let's use this tape player and now we've got that horrible screechy noise. It's shattering the windows and the glass chandelier in the room. Turn that off. The glass chandelier had a key hanging from it and we want that key. The old rusty key. There we go. Let's head back to the kitchen, meet up our fr with our friends, and get that last key to Dave. Mm, excuse me. I am very hungry. My stomach is rumbling and creating gas, which is pushing out my 
out my mouth. That was disgusting. I apologize for that. All right, so uh, now we need to give some things to Bernard. Bernard needs pff, almost everything Razor has uh, to do this efficiently. So he needs these dimes. He needed those tools. Um, Bernard is the smart one. He knows how to fix things, so the tools are, are important to him. The paint remover and the paint brush will be important, as will this faucet handle. Uh, the can of Pepsi. And we need to open up this radio and get some batteries out of it. Use the batteries in the flashlight so that it can function. And then we will give that to Bernard also. There we go. And I think that's everything Bernard needs. So we should be ready to move on. We are going to take uh, Razor into the lounge where she... Actually, let's just take her into the basement. That's where she's going to need to be next. We'll take Dave to do that. And I think you can put... Oh, no, you can't pull on the gargoyle in, in this version. I think some versions you could push or pull, and it would... Uh, open the door either way. In this one, it's just a push. Turn on the lights, and we'll just get her in position over here by the fuse box for a f future oncoming puzzle. Now let's take Dave upstairs, where he will need to wait to infiltrate Nurse Edna's bedroom. And we'll deal with how all of that mess shortly. Okay, so we'll just put him in the room here, where he will be safe in the event anyone decides to go wandering around. Now to Bernard. As I said, Bernard is the smart one. He fixes things. Uh, he understands electronics. He understands old-fashioned radios. Uh, so we're going to pick up this radio tube out of there, which will be necessary to fix another radio a little bit later into the library. This phone is broken, as you can see. It seems to be broken. So we're gonna have Bernard fix that. Come on, fix the phone. There we go. Should be working now. Excellent. Thank you, Bernard. Now we move on upstairs. Oh, I, did I, I mentioned Chuck the plant, didn't I? This is Chuck the Plant. I think I brought him up earlier when I picked up the cassette, but I love him so much, merits another mention. Back out through the lounge and up the stairs for Bernard. Now, what we're going to do here is get Bernard access to a couple of additional rooms where he will need to solve some puzzles upstairs. First, we're going to head back into the workout room and pass through to the bathroom, which is handicap accessible. Very handy. Um, let's open the curtain. Oh my god, there's a mummy in there. Um, and as you can see, the water faucet handle is missing, but we picked that up from the garage. So we'll just Use that water faucet handle with it, and open it, and the water starts running, so let's close it. For a good time, Edna1547, it reads. That is creepy. Why would you write that note in your own bathroom? Oh well, I suspect she's trying to get her husband's attention. Uh, I think that's all Edna really wants, is to be loved passionately over and over again. Uh, so we've opened up this paint remover because there's a blotch of paint all over the wall. Let's use the brush in the paint remover and I don't remember, I, I seem to remember not needing the brush originally. Like, that might have been a, a change at some point, but I could be wrong. I thought you could just splash the paint remover over that blotch and it would handle it. So we've access to that room now. There's this hatch up above us. We need a way in there and we've got this uh, man-eating plant who is wanting to whisper in Bernard's ear. That's just not gonna work for him. Let's give her, give the, the plant a drink, because it looks thirsty. Oh my god, it got huge! And it's Manchi Manchi Manchi. 
And that, that's gonna make him hard to climb up, but it looks like we could climb up him. Let's give him another drink. A little Pepsi. And that makes him all belchy. Yeah. Yup. Right. All set there. So now we're gonna head into this room. And we're gonna use this light to brighten things up a bit. Now, we have everyone we need in position uh, to do our next puzzle. We have Razor open up the fuse box. And so, what, what we're doing here is Bernard is uh, gonna have to fix those wires in order to make this observatory um, control panel function, so you can use the telescope. So we'll head back in to there, and just sort of line him up right there. Switch to Razor, and we'll have her turn off the uh, fuse so that there won't be any current running through those uh, wires when Bernard fixes them. We'll switch to Bernard, we'll turn on the flashlight, not really necessary because we know exactly where it is, but we'll fix those wires, and then we'll switch back to Razor and have her use the circuit breakers, and we did it quickly enough that uh, Dr. Fred and, uh, didn't dispatch Purple Tentacle to go and see what was wrong with the reactor, which is great, because that's gonna save us uh, a little bit of running around and hiding. Now we'll take Razor into the library. She's gonna use the phone, call that number for Edna, so that Dave can slip past Edna and get upstairs above her bedroom. And the number was 1547, so phone should be ringing. There it is, phone ring. Now who could that be? Hello? Who's there? Is this a prank phone call? It doesn't sound like a prank phone call. There's no heavy breathing. Here, let me show you how to do it. Creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. But, because she's occupied with her heavy breathing, we can take Dave into her bedroom. There is a mirror over her bed. It's very, very tiny. It's a ceiling mirror. Creepy. There's a woman in need of some affection. That's what Edna is. Up here, we've got a hideous painting. And as you would expect, behind every hideous painting should be a safe. Uh, there's a scrawled number underneath it, but it's too tiny to read because the Edisons are clearly nuts. They actually put the code for their safe underneath the safe itself. Silly. Why would you do that? Unfortunately, it's too small to read without the use of this telescope, uh, which is pointed at a tree. So using the dimes we picked up from our uh, excursion into Ed's room and off the floor in the uh, radio room, we're going to use the right button a couple of times in order to rotate that uh, lovely telescope to give us a better view. Press that right button one more time. And it has rotated and moved. Let's use the telescope. Three, six, two, one. These numbers change every time, so you have to do it every time. I think there's a, a stock set of numbers it could be, but even still. Boom! Safe open. Right, so we'll pick up this envelope. Um, the envelope, actually crucial to a number of the uh, puzzles, but not the solution that I'm going to use to finish the game, so we're just going to open it up and uh, take the quarter. Now, we are done with Razor being on the phone with Edna, so we'll just take her and move her off the phone because we want to take advantage of an opportunity to do a little shortcutting to get uh, Dave into an easier position. So off the phone, Dave now... With Razor off the phone, Dave comes downstairs and... Oh my gosh, Edna's discovered him! I got you! How silly of me! 
I should have tied you to my bed! Oh, I loved that line as a kid, and I didn't get it until I was, you know, older. And so I was just like, that's a funny thing to say. She's so weird. Because, you know, I mean, I was like 10 or 11 when I first started playing this game. Uh, so down here, Dave has been sent to the dungeon, but we have some things we can do here. We can use this glowing key to open up the padlocks on this door and open that up. And oh my god, there's an inner door with a keypad. It requires a combination, and we don't have that yet. So... Oh, Fred's visiting his wife. Edna, I'm having trouble with the zombie-matic. I need to shut down the power. It'll be off for five or six minutes. Is that all you have to say to me? You've been locked in that basement for 20 years. Sometimes I think you like that meteor more than me. Don't worry, my little beauty queen. Soon everything will be different. Sure. Oh, poor Edna. So lonely. So sad. Bernard! Having gotten us the password that we need, or having gotten us the quarter that we need, we are going to take him into the radio room where he will accomplish his final goals. He'll take this radio tube, and we're going to use it, the tube socket, on this radio. Uh, hey, what's this wanted poster? Wanted for terrible acts of violence. One murderous, purple, slimy meteor. If found, call 1138. And we would do that on this radio. So let's do that now. Let's call that number and see what happens. Ooh, it's ring. Oh! A view of the Earth. And over on the moon. This is the meteor police. Uh huh. You found the murderous purple meteor. I'll be there in five minutes. Okay, oh, make sure the lab is unlocked. But the lab isn't unlocked! What will I do? Keep it under light speed. Right. So we need to find a way in this inner door before we can get out. Now, they locked me in this basement, but, uh,. Oh no, did I forget to give- I forgot to give him the rusty key. Oh, what a yutz I am. Did I? Did I give it to Bernard by mistake? Oh no, that's the old rusty key. Yeah, okay. Phew. The old rusty key unlocks this door, so there was really nothing to be concerned about there. Alright! Let's go get him! Whoops. Can't get in there. Maybe next time. And so he's going to teleport out. So until I can get in the door there, can't, uh, can't use the help of the meteor police. Hey, Ed! The meteor wants to borrow your hamster and electric cattle prod. That sounds horrible. My hamster? Nobody touches my hamster. Better watch it, Ed. You're going to piss off the meteor. It already thinks you stole my purple card key. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't get to the meteor without it. Oh, really? Shape up, kid! Yes, yeah, so there's the clue that we need the key card that we've already stolen from Ed in order to get into the meteor's room. We're headed upstairs, where we're going to give a little something something, that being this quarter, to Razor, we're also going to give her the small key, just in case, although it probably won't be necessary. And then we'll have Razor push the gargoyle to allow Dave back down into the basement. Heading past the reactor and back into the dungeon, so no one will be the wiser that he's gone, although nobody really notices when he's gone. When anyone's gone. Wonder if you know him. Me too. So, we need the key code to get in here, and the way we get that is by playing Dr. Fred Edison's favorite video game, Meteor Mess, over here in the arcade room. I think this is the arcade room. Yup. So, let's play Meteor Mess. 
we use the quarter with the Meteor Mess game. And she's playing. And Dr. Fred's high score is 3301. And there went the power just in time. So let's open that. 3301. Boom! The door is open. So let's head back to Bernard. We'll have him use the radio to call the meteor police again. Call the meteor police, Bernard! Okay, I'll come back, but this time unlock the lab. His voice changed. I don't know why. And here's Dave. The... It is unlocked. <laughs> Dr. Fred is playing the game in front of uh, <coughs> Razor. That would indicate that the password had changed. Oh shit, what happened? There we go. Uh, but we're just going to wait for the meteor police to show up here with the open door. And I, I think we might be done after this. I don't know if I have to do any... It's been so long since I've done the meteor police ending, I, I don't quite remember what all that entails once they show up. Alright. Let's go get them. In you go. Don't bug me, sucker face. Meter Place just walks right past Purple Tentacle, who would have uh, stopped anyone else. Um... Or at least tried to impede them. The uh, Meteor Police progressing straight through the keycard locked door that would otherwise require me to use the keycard from Weird Ed's room. So here you are, slimy purple media. Oh no, you found me. You're coming with me, Craterhead. Boom! Took the Meteor. Meteor's gone! The meteor that was controlling... Weird Ed. Oh! But, uh, I guess Purple Tentacle will still stop me from escaping. Hmm. Neat. So the Meteor Police is not enough to do it. I'm still gonna need to befriend somebody to get access. Interesting. That's not really a problem, though. We'll just do it real quick. See, even I learned something from this whole experience. Okay, so now all the doors here are locked again. Uh, we'll have to unlock them, and we'll have to get the code again from, uh, where Razor is. Oh, there's a badge! I don't remember this at all. Huh. I guess I probably could have used that badge to, uh, push past Purple Tentacle. Interesting. Well, now, the uh, Meteor Mess game has been played, which means the password has been changed, but because I took the small key from, uh... Edna's room, just in case, I can get my quarter back from the coin box. Come on, pick up the quarter. I, want, I, I selected use. I do that a lot. Pick up the quarter, and use it in the Meteor Mess game. And what's our new high score? It's still 3301. Okay. Interesting. So we'll switch back to Dave. We'll open the door with 3301. I guess the Zombie-Matic machine is still operational, and that's the problem. Uh, the Zombie-Matic machine is what uh, the Meteor had Fred build to uh, control his own mind. It's pretty crazy. Use the badge with the... Oh, no. Use it with Purple Tentacle. I'm with the Meteor Police. You can't stop me. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Fred made me do it. He forced me along with his plan. It's all his fault! I'm innocent! He's right in there! Oh, you pansy. Get him! Arrest him! Kill him! He's mad! I'll help you! I'm your friend! You can trust me! Ah! Oh, a fat lot of help you are running away out the door. Let's see what Dr. Fred has to say for himself. Purple Tentacle! Invaders! Purple Tentacle! Yes, well, we have dealt with your purple tentacle. So, you've gotten past all my safeguards. There's only one thing left to do. I'm arming the self-destruct mechanism. Only I know the secret code to stop it. 
So now the house is gonna blow up unless I can stop the zombie matic machine. And the only way to stop the zombie matic machine is to get through the door to the meteor chamber. The house wouldn't blow up in two minutes. <laughs> right, so let's just walk past the zombie matic machine. Hey Sandy! Hey Sandy, how's it going? Oh, you got nothing to say to your girlfriend? That seems inconsiderate. Now there's radioactivity in that room, so we want to use this radiation suit. Oh, pick it up. Why can't you? Ah! Stop missing the click, Conrad. And then we're gonna use the card key that we stole from Ed's room in the card slot. The door opens, and we use the switch. Boom! The zombie medic has been disabled. Oh, what happened? I feel much better now. I'm free of this machine's control. But wait! The self-destruct sequence was initiated. I'll try to turn it off. I did it! I'm sorry for my mad, insane plan and caused you so much trouble. How can I ever repay you for your help? Cash would be nice. That cash would be nice. Don't be a tuna head! So that's Maniac Mansion! Obviously, there's a, a bunch of different ways to solve it. Multiple endings, multiple resolutions, different things happen to the characters depending on what you've done, the meteor has different fates, Fred has different fates. Play Maniac Mansion, Maniac Mansion Deluxe, is free to download. It's a fan production. Thanks for watching uh, me play it, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye.